Hey, hey, you're listening to Rising Into Mindful Motherhood. I'm your host, Dr. Katie Wood. I'm a barefoot mama bear, pharmacist, integrative fertility health coach, and lover of all things nature and animals. I'm on a mission to have intentional conversations about the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to fertility, pregnancy, postpartum, and beyond. My mindful guest and I will be talking about struggles, wins, natural wellness, and how we grow and transform as we enter motherhood. My background in healthcare has shown me how broken our medical system is. My own struggles to become pregnant has shown the lack of support for mamas-to-be, the lack of guidance for women to have a nourishing and vibrant pregnancy, the isolation, mom guilt, and all the things we hold after bringing baby Earthside. I want this platform to be a place where women can feel connected, safe and supported to share and hear their stories. A place to use our voice to discuss and advocate about what we need and deserve as mothers. So let's dive in, shall we? Hello and welcome to Rising Into Mindful Motherhood. Today I'll be chatting with Tiffany Thomas. She is a financial wealth expert, author, and she has dedicated her career to helping others achieve their financial goals and creating generational wealth. Today, she's going to share how to become a financially savvy woman, and I love it. I can't wait for this episode. Welcome, Tiffany. Hi, Katie. Thanks so much for having me on today. I'm excited to be here. Yes, thanks for taking the time. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So I am a single woman. uh, So I manage all my finances myself. I don't have anyone else to rely on or anything like that. But I just became really passionate about finances and especially investing my money. Um, Growing up, I was really good at saving my money. And then once I switched over to investing my money and making it work for me, I thought I need to tell everyone about this. And so I started my business Um, I started as a blog and then I've turned it into a coaching business and I also have a YouTube channel. So I have a lot of content on there, but yeah, before that I was, I mean, I studied business and um, had a degree, have a degree in marketing and a master's in business. Um, And I was doing marketing for a food storage company, but I don't know. I just didn't really feel fulfilled when I was working there. And so yeah, once I started really getting into investing, I decided to start my own business. So I started a few years ago and I've just been yeah, helping people be better with their money and learn to invest it. So it's been, it's been quite the journey, but it's been really fun and rewarding at the same time. Mm -hmm. I love it. So you loved to save your money when you were younger, but I do have to ask if you don't mind me sharing, because I think that this can come up a lot and it's come up um, in terms of like my own personal development. Like what was the language around money in your household when you were growing up? Yeah. So good question. Um, When I was growing up, my parents were both good at saving money. And so they instilled that in me as I was growing up, it was, you know, you need to, the first thing you need to do, well, we were also Christian. And so we paid our tithing, but we also paid ourselves first. So it was, yeah, it was ingrained in me as I was growing up. So I'm sure that has a big part to, to do with that, being able to save money. And I remember my dad, you know, telling us, turn off the lights, you're wasting electricity. We need to save money that way. Um, so it was, it, yeah, it was definitely ingrained in me as I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love it. And I know earlier you had mentioned, like, as soon as you started figuring this out for yourself, you just had to tell everyone about it. So how have your like friends and your family responded to that? Because I know sometimes people can be like, oh, yeah, that's really cool. But maybe they're not into it. Or have you had anyone also have a lot of success in like your inner circle? Yeah, so you're right. A lot of people are not so much into that. So I don't try to push it on to people that are just not interested. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do have some family that's not very interested in it, um, which is fine. So I'm not like pushing it on them or anything like that. But 
just, you know, kind of living by example and showing them what is possible yeah. is a big way that I've been able to have that influence without being pushy and whether or not they take action, you know, that's up to them, but mm -hmm. at least I'm providing that example. And then I have had friends that have come to me and, you know, they'll ask me their financial questions or even just tell me about their finances because they know I'm passionate about it. So they have someone that they can talk to, which is really nice. Um, so there have been, you know, a few friends that I've talked to about it and they are curious about it. And so it's been nice to share the information with them. And also I have a really good friend who was one of my, is one of my mentors. And he actually helped me start investing in real estate and the stock market too. So it does make a big difference when you have someone that's in your inner circle with a similar mindset. And especially if they are kind of ahead of where you are and where you want to be, you can definitely ask questions to them. So I've definitely found a lot of benefit in having a mentor and spending time with people that are kind of passionate about this and, you know, financially savvy, but then also having others come to me and ask questions and be curious. I love that. I love the tip on the mentor because I completely agree. And, you know, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately about like manifesting money and abundance. And that's one of the things that they talk about is, and I think this goes for anything, but, you know, really, say, if you want to start being healthier, I think this would apply as well. You want to surround yourself with at least some people who share that same mindset. And then also people who are a few steps ahead of you and, and having a mentor. So you can really go to them for support and questions and they, they can help you kind of grow and expand as well. So I, I love that you have a mentor that you can do that with. Um, so I know you kind of already mentioned, you know, your financial journey has really, really started when you were younger, but, you know, what were the steps that you really took? Because, you know, don't be too humble on here. So I know in your book, or I saw it somewhere like by age 30, or, or why don't you tell the audience about that? Because I might not be remembering it correctly, but by a very young age, you became very financially secure and stable. So I would love to know what that looked like for you and and how long it took and, and all those steps. Yeah. So yeah, I quit my nine to five job at age 36 and became, I say I became financially free at age 38 because I had purchased another property and that gave me enough cash flow, but I didn't have to go back to work. So, um, and then I became a millionaire at 40, but I just, yeah, going back and looking at those initial steps, um, since I was good at saving my money at a young age, that was kind of already ingrained in me. And so, you know, I had money in my savings account but I knew I had way too much money in my savings account. Like I knew it needed to be working for me. And so going back to the mentor, I asked my friend who is successful with investing in real estate in the stock market. I asked him, you know, how have you been able to do this? And can you help me do it? Can you share the steps? Um, and so he kind of shared how he was able to do that. And I thought, okay, if he's been able to do this, I can do it too. And so I kind of took my first step and purchased my own property, my own townhouse. And I had two roommates living with me. So I was getting cash flow from my two roommates. And um, I started investing a little bit in the stock market. Um, just, I was really nervous to do it because of all the horror, horror stories that I've heard and just, you know, people saying, oh, I've, you know, lost all my money or whatever. Um, so it made me a little nervous. So I just really started small. Like I started small with my first house, like buying a townhouse instead of, you know, a single family house. And then just starting with one stock investment and then building up from there. So after I had, you know, purchased my property and had roommates, I thought I really need to uh, make my money work for me even more. And so I purchased a rental property and that one was 
a two bedroom, two bath condo. So again, just another smaller property, just another small step that I could take, right? So I didn't feel super overwhelmed. And then when I saw success with that, I thought, oh, I need another property. <laughs> like This is going really well. Uh, so I ended up purchasing another property and I actually moved into that property, left my roommates in my old place and replaced myself there and got roommates in my new place to create even more cash flow. Um, and then purchased another property shortly thereafter. But along the way, I was also investing in the stock market a little bit more, becoming more comfortable with that as well. And that's actually how I was able to purchase my fourth property. I took money from my stock market investments and put it toward my down payment for the house. So just, yeah, kind of taking one small step at a time and seeing other people having success with it is really how I was able to get to where I am today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also I think you talked about this before, but kind of where you said, you know, manifesting money and, um, you know, if you are really clear on what you want financially, what your goals are, if you can see that and focus on that, that really helps too, because that's something that helped me. I would buy, you know, clothes all the time and I didn't need all of the clothes that I was buying. And I kept thinking, you know what, this is not aligning with my goals anymore. And so I really switched that and thought, okay, if I want to buy another property, I need to just stop spending money on frivolous things. You know, I mean, I would still buy a shirt here and there, but it wasn't excessive, right? Um, I was more focused on, okay, these are my goals. This is what I want to manifest. This is what I want to see in my life. So I would write those down, try to keep them top of mind and then take the action that goes along with achieving those goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So did you have some like journaling going on there? Like where you would actually write your goals out? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I would, yeah, I would write them out and be very specific. And when I wanted to become a millionaire by 40, I wrote it on my mirror. And so <laughs> I would look at that every morning. Um, and yeah, it just really helps to keep a top of mind if you are writing those things down. And especially like I would even do a screensaver on my phone or like the, whatever it's called, the, whatever, the screen on your phone. <laughs> um, but I would put like, you know, a goal there or even just a quote that would remind me um, what I'm working towards. Mm -hmm. I I love that. I have a screen saver on my phone too with a goal for myself I have to ask you have you um ever read the book by Jen Sincero you are a badass at making money yes I have read that book yep I've listened to that yeah um, did you love times. it yeah I did love it I thought she was great and she is so entertaining in her book as well right she just makes it so fun um but yeah I really liked her book and she yeah like she just focused on her goals and it you know, she stretched her mindset, like her beliefs around money mm -hmm. a lot. And she was able to become so successful. I really liked that book. Yeah. Yeah. I um, downloaded the audible and I was maybe like just a couple chapters in and I was like, I have to get the hard copy and like highlight the crap out of it. <laughs> um, because like I had asked you earlier, you know, I think our money mindset, we don't even realize it, you know, depending on the home that you grew up in, I mean, maybe um, your parents had a really like scarcity money mindset or like a lack of money mindset. And then that's what you have for yourself as well, or, or whatever it may be. Um, you know, I won't say who, but out of one of my parents, one of them was really good at saving their money and the other one, maybe not so much. So like, I almost had both worlds there. Growing up, I was definitely a saver like you. So I can see how you would be nervous um, investing in the stock market because it is like you work so hard for that money and you save it. And, you know, there's a risk involved when you invest. And that can be a little scary to have that potential of like losing that money. Um, so to go back to that, I I like that you you know, kind of started small. And I think that that applies to so many things. I mean, it's like how, you know, maybe going 
balls to the wall or like all in in the stock market just isn't the way to do it. You just got to kind of like dip your toe in it. And like you said, as soon as you almost have that like confirmation of success, then you felt a little bit more comfortable um, doing more. I'm trying to think. Um, I have a financial advisor. He has a term. I can't think of what it's called, like the level of risk you're willing to take. Risk tolerance. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My husband has a higher risk tolerance than me <laughs> when it comes to to all of that. So um, amazing. So do you have any tips for anyone who maybe hasn't had like a long history of saving or saving is hard for them in terms of like, where would be the best place to start if this is something that they would eventually like, let's just say, invest in real estate? Yeah, so one easy way to just kind of start saving your money for like a down payment on a house or whatever it is you want to save for is to set up an automatic transfer from your checking to your savings. So you can just, you know, set up, you can just start really small, even, even 1% is better than nothing. Right. So just take a percentage and have that automatic transfer done every single month or every two weeks. If you have a nine to five, whatever works for you. But if you just have that going in the background, that's going to make a really big difference because you don't have to think about saving your money. It's done for you when you do that. Mm -hmm. And just to share an experience, I did a workshop where I shared this tip and my friend was attending the workshop. She came up to me after and said, I'm going to head to the bank right now. I'm going to set up my auto transfer. And I was like, that's amazing. And then maybe about six months later, she sent me a text and she's like, Tiffany, I'm so glad I did my auto transfer. I have so much money in my savings. There's no way I would have had that amount if I had not done that automatic transfer. Mm -hmm. So she was super glad she did it. So that's just one like small way to get started. And it makes it very simple because you set it up once and then you don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that um, suggestion for sure, because you can go really, really small, you know, if, if that's all you can do at the time, but it will add up over time. Um, I remember one of my husband's uncles had recommended to us at the time, you know, we graduated from pharmacy school when we were 23. So I mean, like, unfortunately, we, we weren't as uh, money savvy, or we just that just wasn't a concern or priority for us. But one um, recommendation he said was any raise that you get, like, have that percentage go to like your 401k or really whatever. I mean, you could have it go into savings too. Um, but I think that that was a cool idea. Um, did I do it? No. Do I wish I did it now? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. So for anyone who's listening, especially if, if you're fresh out of college, like take that tip because I can only imagine what that could look like now. Um, and I remember in pharmacy school, we had like a economics teacher or something like that. And he just recommended like starting that 401k like right away from school. And he would give these examples of like, if you start it at 25, and even if it's just this amount, like it can be whatever it is by the time you retire. But if you start at like 40, which some people do that or later it's it'd be like a fraction of the amount yeah it makes a huge difference if you can start earlier and if you're thinking oh well I'm old right now it's too late to start it's never too late to start like start today right like the saying goes the best time to plant a tree was five years ago the next best time is today and that's the same thing with investing our money the sooner we can start the better off we'll be and you're right like I did, I don't know, I was doing analysis the other day and just um, if you invested for 10 years and put a thousand a month um, in your investment account for 10 years, it's about $231,000. But if you have that um, going into your account over a period of 30 years, it's over $2.4 million. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So it's just a drastic difference because of that compound interest. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're absolutely right. The earlier you start, the better off you'll be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's not too late to start. So still start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no matter where you are in life, definitely not too late to start. Um And one other thing for me is as we are getting older and I'm trying to become more savvy with my money is one thing that I learned is you really just have to know what's going, what's coming in and what's going out. Like, I feel like for me, at least that was a really, really big step to take is like tracking your money every week. So like I have this little like money day on Mondays where I, look at our accounts and kind of track everything because, you know, with credit cards nowadays and PayPal and whatever else, like, you know, we're not necessarily balancing checkbooks like our parents used to have to do back in the day. So it's so easy to get out of touch with what's even going on with your money or how much you're spending on Starbucks in a month or something like that. So I also recommend just even beginning there, like tracking your money, kind of become a little bit curious about that. Um, Yeah. Do you have any other like simple, easy tips for anyone? Yeah. Going along with that, with tracking your money. One way I like to do that is by using a free app. It's called Empower. It used to be called Personal Capital. There's also another one called Mint. But using that, you can hook all of your financial accounts. So your credit cards, your mortgage payment, your 401k, like checking savings, everything. You can hook them all to Empower and then see your full financial picture in just one place. Mm -hmm. So I actually have the app on my phone and I check that pretty much every day. I just open it up you know, wait for it 30 seconds, whatever, and it updates all of the accounts. And I can see exactly what I have in all my accounts, which payments have gone through, all of the rent checks that have come in or rent payments, whatever, like it's all in one place. So I really like using that. Mm -hmm. Um, I found that to be really helpful because what gets tracked gets measured and gets improved, right? So if we're never looking at our money, we're never going to improve our money situation. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's just another little hack. Um, And then, yeah, like you said before, with the, um, with getting a raise, if you already have a plan for that money before it comes in, then you're going to be a lot better off rather than just increasing your expenses as soon as you get a raise. If you already tell yourself, okay, I'm just going to put that right into my 401k then you don't even miss the money and you're building up your retirement funds or your financial freedom funds even faster by doing that, by avoiding that lifestyle creep. Um, So it's just nice if you can have a plan for any type of bonus that you're getting or raise or whatever it is. If you're getting a tax refund, if you already have a plan for that money before you get it, you're going to be a lot better off. You'll you know, know where to put that money instead of just getting the money and thinking, oh, I'll just go on a shopping spree or whatever it is. That's but, a great idea with the tax return too. Yeah. And I mean, even if I'm not about like depriving yourself of anything fun, right? So you can say, okay, I'm going to put, you know, 50% um, extra in my retirement accounts and then I'll take a nice trip or, you know, whatever your priorities are, but just make sure you're planning that out in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What are some new fun and exciting ways I can serve these women who are wanting to have a child and become a mother and just step into that next version of themselves? And I am going to be releasing in early September, a brand new Confident Conception membership. And I want to be able to serve and impact as many women as possible with this membership. That is my true intention from my heart. I do not want any woman who desires 
needs or wants more holistic integrative natural guidance and support along their fertility journey because i know that this piece is heavily lacking in the western conventional space so if you desire that for yourself that is why i've created this membership because you should not have to be limited to the help and guidance and support that you receive this membership is at an incredible investment level and the value is it's amazing so just to kind of give you a little sneak peek i'm not revealing the true details until early early september but you are going to have access in this membership the method that i use and have used with my one-on-one -on -one clients with my group coaching clients you name it and this framework this method has been able to get women pregnant when they were otherwise told they could not get pregnant naturally and that they needed IUI and IVF. So I have a wait list for this beautiful membership that I will be launching soon. And if this interests you even a little bit, even if you're just curious, like you're still not sure if this is right for you, if this is what you need, that's totally fine. I would get yourself on this membership wait list because anyone who is on the wait list is going to be the first to know when the membership launches. You will know before anyone on my email list on my Instagram, Facebook, anywhere on social media, anyone who's on this wait list will be the absolute first to know and you will be the first and only to have access to a very exclusive founder's rate for signing up for the membership. So you're definitely going to want to be on the wait list for this because like I had said, it is an investment level that can serve everyone because that is my goal that is my dream that is my passion that is why I am here on this earth so this is what my heart my mind has birthed really um, as a way to support and impact more women more couples more families because at the end of the day that's why I do this I do this to help you realize your dream of becoming a mother, your dream of holding your child, whether it's your first child, your second, third, fourth, and beyond. Um, and you mentioned earlier in the call that you started a program, a coaching program. Yes. Yes. So I started a group coaching program and it's helping women and men also, but my target audience is definitely women, um, but it's helping them learn to invest in the stock market. So we actually open up your accounts. We transfer money over, we buy your first investment. Um, so it's, yeah, it's an awesome program. Um, I'm super excited about it. And yeah, I've had people go through it and I have testimonial videos that are amazing and just, yeah, such amazing feedback. And I love, love helping people learn to invest their money. Um, and at the beginning of the program, like we make sure that your finances are in order. So I share like my spending plan template um, and we can see exactly how much you have to invest. So we get things in order, but um, then we move on to the investing portion. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. It's called Investors to Seven Figures. Mm -hmm. um, so it's on my, on my website. If you go to wealthytiffany.com, um, there's a free masterclass on there that you can sign up for, and it goes over investing in the stock market and then how to work with me and my group coaching program too. Love it. I would love to hear a testimonial. Like if you can think of one off the top of your head. Yeah. So one of the girls, um, this one's a number one, but she already had a 401k set up, but she had 
you know, just kind of forgotten about it and didn't really know what she was invested in inside of the 401k. So we took a look at her 401k and we made changes. We switched around her investments. Um, and then just just a week later, she posted in the group that she had increased that 401k by $9,000 just by switching it over. So that was like an amazing um, increase. And that doesn't always happen, right? But it just goes to show if you're in the right funds or better funds, you are going to make money. So that was a really fun testimonial that she had shared in yeah, there. That's exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And- and there was another girl just really briefly. She um, she had sold her home. And so she had a ton of money just sitting in savings and she just wasn't sure what to do with it. And she had met with a few different financial advisors. But of course, they're you know not explaining things to her. They're just saying, oh, we can do this and this for you. And she doesn't really know what that means. Um, and then she had found my program. And so she decided to sign up and she just going through the program, she was saying how happy she was that she did the program because she learned to do things on her own. So she can now take care of all of her money, like all of her finances on her own. She's not going to rely on someone else for the rest of her life to take care of her money and not even be sure if they're doing a good job with it. Mm -hmm. Um, And where she had a significant amount, like she wanted to make sure that it was invested in the right places. So Yeah, she was also super happy that she could just learn that on her own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree with her because like I had mentioned, we are working with a financial advisor right now, but I would love to get to that place where I have like at least some understanding because like right now I have like I have no idea. I'm like my mom works with him, so I trust him. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's like, I I still don't like not understanding, you know, what is going on at the end of the day. So I think that really just like empowering yourself with knowing how to do this is, is a really amazing thing. So I love that you have this program and that, you know, your target market is really women. Because um, I feel like what women kind of get this like reputation of we can't handle money right like that the men typically take over and and manage it and all this stuff but women can definitely do it and we can do it well and I think that you're a perfect example of that so (laughs) thanks for setting the example yes yeah I completely agree like there's even been studies that have been done that say women are better investors than men But you're right. We get the bad rap. Like, oh, women can't really handle money, especially investing. Like it's too scary for them or whatever. But that is not the case. Like we totally can do this. We can totally learn how to do it. And and you're right. Like I am an example of that. And I'm teaching so many people, so many women how to do that, that they are becoming examples as well. Like, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just makes such a difference when we understand it ourselves, whether or not we are married or have a significant other, because we don't want to just turn a blind eye and let someone else be in charge of the money. Like we have no idea what will happen in the future. And it's just, it gives us peace of mind if we know how to handle our money and especially invest our money. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for anyone who's listening that, you know, has kiddos at home or is thinking of starting a family, you know, my daughter is going to be four in May, but ideally by the time she's, you know, at, you know, a decent age to, you know, I don't think it's ever too early to learn about money. She has a little cash register downstairs with pretty realistic looking money down there, but, you know, I, I can hand this down to her and then she ideally and hopefully will be in a better position financially and to really keep track of her money and invest her money from a very young age. So I think that that's another beautiful way that you're helping women who I'm sure some of them have families that it's really going to like trickle down and have this ripple effect. Yeah. It's not just the one person being helped. You're right. It's their whole family and anyone that associates with them. And that really is building the generational wealth. If we can teach them the knowledge 
on how to do it instead of just passing on the assets, right? I mean, sure, that's nice, but we've seen when people don't understand how money works or how to invest it, like people that win the lottery, they go broke very soon after Mm -hmm. and even, you know, movie stars, football players, whatever, like they don't know how to manage it. And so it's so easy for them to go broke. So Mm -hmm. I love teaching the knowledge part, the education part and helping people actually do it. So they can pass that knowledge along with the assets, but passing that knowledge along, I think is so important. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And this was just kind of coming through to me. And this is kind of more on like a energetic spectrum of this. But when you have a greater awareness of your money and your money mindset, and you really work on that, I think you're then able to receive more money. Cause like you had said something that made me think of that, like managing. Yeah. But people who win the lottery. So probably prior to winning the lottery, they probably weren't managing their money or being wise with their money. And then they get all of this abundance and they don't know how to manage it. Um, So really having that, kind of lock down even a, just a little bit of this awareness. I Because think of all the things that you could do with a lottery winning. Like, what would you... So that's a great question. What would you do if you won a million dollars in the lottery? What would you do with that money? I would probably put some in real estate and the stock market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my two go-tos. Yeah. And I am, I want to like redo my backyard. So I would spend money on that too. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, just, you know, if we don't have an understanding of what to do with the money, like we'll just spend it. Right. And it'll be gone so fast. But if we can realize, oh, if I can put this million dollars into real estate, into something that's going to make my money work for me, then all of that cash flow I'm creating, I can buy liabilities or things that aren't going to make me money, or I can buy more assets and continue to increase that cash flow. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those that don't understand, they just spend money on things that aren't going to make the money and then they run out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, I like that answer. So definitely spending something on yourself. Yeah. Like your yard, because that's, that's an investment too, because then you get to enjoy Mm -hmm. it afterwards. And then if you were to ever resell your house or anything like that. um, So would you do like with the leftovers, like 50% in real estate, 50% in investments, or would it just kind of depend on what real estate you find? What investments? Is it just kind of like up, up in the air until you figure it out then? Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to say an exact percentage just because of, you know, what property I would find if it's, you know, 600,000 or whatever, um, then I would do more in real estate and a little less in the stock market. Mm -hmm. So yeah, kind of would just depend on how much it would cost. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's always fun to think about. What would you do if you won a million (laughs) dollars? Yeah. And it's a good thing to think about because, you know, if we can, like you said before, create that mindset of abundance and wealth instead of the scarcity mindset, Mm -hmm. like it gets us thinking, oh, well, if I did win a million dollars, I would do this. And then you start thinking, well, how could I make a million dollars? Or what if I could just make a hundred thousand or even a thousand extra, right? So it gets our minds thinking in that abundance mindset. Yeah. And I know um, Jen mentions in her book, hers is really like, well, some parts are are like if you're trying to call in more money through your business, but I know some of the things she would talk about is, okay, you want to make 10K months, but like, what are your plans for that money? Like, do you want to pay off student loan debt? Do you want to pay your bills, get debt free, pay off your credit cards? So like, like you said, having that understanding of where you want that money to go. So if you get a tax return or a raise, like just not even like that money isn't even available to you because you already have it going somewhere, 
which I think is a really, really smart and easy decision because if you were making X amount before you had this raise, then really it's not, you know, any different if you just pretend that you don't even have that raise. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And yeah, it's just a great, great way to look at it because then we're not just increasing our expenses and all of a sudden, oh, we're running out of money or things feel tight, right? If we already have that plan, we can just keep living the way we are and still be comfortable and still be happy, but yeah, have this money working for us in the background, which is amazing. Yes. Passive money income streams, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think I'm glad I remembered this because this came to my mind um, earlier, like Airbnb and all of those things are just booming right now. Like I feel like more times than not, I'm renting an Airbnb over going to a hotel because I mean, especially when you have little kiddos with you, it's so much easier to take all the things into a house instead of like on the 10th floor of a hotel, depending on where you're at. And it's just so much more homey and cozy. So to invest in real estate and then like rent it out as something like Airbnb, like I can only imagine the potential, especially for like your location that you have. So my stepsister and her fiance, they live in Buffalo, New York. I don't know if you're familiar with Buffalo. Not not too familiar with Buffalo. I mean, I've been to New York, but yeah. It's a pretty booming um, city for sure. And they have, I think like three Airbnbs and they've been able to, I know at least like that's covering their bills, if not more. Um, So I think that, investing in that type of real estate and then renting it out as like an Airbnb is definitely something my husband and I have our eyes on in the future. Um, Obviously just need to kind of get that capital to be able to do that. Um, But yeah, I think it's kind of fun and exciting. And if you get a cool place, then your family can enjoy it too. Yeah. It has that double purpose, which is nice. And yeah, especially like Buffalo, New York, I'm sure they are doing great. Like, um, and yeah, the potential with real estate and in particular Airbnb is huge, especially if you have a great location for that. And like you said, I always stay in Airbnbs now and instead of the hotels, like that's just more convenient. It's nicer and more homey feeling and yeah. So if you own a property and you can do Airbnb, like and just create that cash flow. And then if you want to go and stay there, your family wants to, you know, just block up that weekend. So mm-hmm. it's a really nice way to invest in real estate because you get, you know, benefits multiple ways. Mm-hmm. So you are a newly published author. Super yes. excited for you. I'm so glad I saw that post. I literally went right on to Amazon and got it because I am in the midst of like going through Jed and Sincero's book for a second, my second time. So I'm very much into this mindset. So when I saw that post, I was like, yes, I'm going to get that. I'm going to read it because she doesn't really talk about investments or real estate or anything like that. Um, so please tell us about your book. Yeah. It's called You Will Be Financially Free. I wanted a title that would just say like, you can accomplish something great. Um, So that's what I went with. But I just go over my steps that I took to become financially free. And I break it down very simply and just have relatable experiences in there. So yeah, I kind of start with our mindset like we've been talking about. Um, So that's kind of the first piece of the puzzle. Um, and I just, you know, I talk about your why for becoming financially free. Like you want to figure out why you want that so that it can help motivate you on your path to financial freedom. Um, and really believing that you can become financially free because you can. And then I just talk about, um, you know, figuring out where you are now with your money. Like we talked about, you know, seeing your income, your expenses, figuring that out. Um, And then figuring out what your financial freedom number is. Mm -hmm. So getting that tangible number that you can work towards to become financially free because we have to know what we're working toward, right? 
Um, and then I go into how you will actually get there. So I talk about you know, ways to decrease your expenses and increase your income, and then also how to make your money work for you so that you can stop working for the money. Um, so I go over, you know, real estate and the stock market. Um, and then I talk about securing your financial freedom so that you can actually stay financially free when you get there. Mm -hmm. And I just share my real life examples throughout the book so that people can understand how I was able to do it, do it so that they can understand how they can do it too. So yeah, I just barely launched that and I am super excited about that. I've gotten some great reviews already on Amazon. So it's nice to see those reviews and, um, and I'm so glad that you purchased the book. I'm excited to hear your feedback about that too. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you will be financially free. Mm -hmm. That is the plan. I love it. <laughs> So how long did it take you to write it? Like, how was that whole writing process and experience for you? It took me over three years to write it. So it took a while. I would write a little bit and then I would put it to the side and then I would pick it up again and then put it to the side and pick it up. And then after I had written quite a bit of the book, I decided to change the layout of the book. So then I went through and had to change everything. Um, but it just, yeah, it took a while, but I finally was able to publish it and feel good about it. And of course it's not perfect, but if it was perfect, I never would have published it because <laughs> I never would have gotten there. Um, but yeah, it took a while. So it has, you know, some heart and soul in it. It took a while to, to write it. Cause I really wanted to include everything possible to help people, get the steps, like the real life steps to become financially free. Yeah. A labor of love. And I'm sure it felt so good to have that finally published. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. It feels really good. <laughs> Amazing. Well, if you're listening and you're new to this whole like money concept, money mindset, being savvy with your money, then definitely check out her book. The link will be in the show notes for sure. Um, and I know you had briefly mentioned earlier, you have a freebie. If you just want to talk about that, where they can find it and where the listeners could learn more and connect with you as well. Yeah. So if they go to sevenfigurenetworth.com and it's the number seven, not spelled out, um, they can get access to my free masterclass, how to get started in the stock market even if you think you don't have enough time or you're not going to understand it. Um, so I have that free masterclass. And then if they want to connect with me, I'm on YouTube, of course. You can just type in Wealthy Tiffany. And I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all the things. Um, <laughs> and then my, my regular website is wealthytiffany.com. Perfect. And I'll have all those links in the show notes for sure. So do you have any final words of wisdom? I think especially for any women who are maybe wanting to start this financially free journey. Yeah, so I I would just start small, like take one small step forward wherever you are on the path, whether that's, you know, setting up your budget, you know, download that free app, Empower um, if you already have money saved, you kind of know where your finances are and you're ready to start investing, like definitely, you know, check out my masterclass or my free YouTube videos. I have a lot of YouTube videos about the basics, but I would just say, you know, what would be your next step and just take that one small step forward so that you can have that action and then you can take the next step and then the next step and not feel so overwhelmed about it. Mm hmm Beautiful. I love that. Thank you for that. And thanks so much for sharing your story and all of your tips with us today, Tiffany. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on, Katie. This was really fun. It was. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Rising into Mindful Motherhood podcast. If this episode resonated with you or gave you an aha moment, stop what you're doing right now and write a review. This simple act of kindness helps me get this podcast out to connect with as many women as I possibly can. I also have a special offer. If you send me a screenshot of your review, I will take $250 off 
one of my premium coaching containers. Let me know what resonated with you the most and why. So connect with me in my free Facebook community or tag me on Instagram. You'll find both listed below. Thanks again from the bottom of my heart for tuning into this episode and I'll see you next time.